Hello. Yeah, all, all you guys can hear me, and even I, am, I can hear myself too. <laughs> so mic is working. So good afternoon, and welcome to our session, Innovating at Scale, Building and Managing a Developer Platform with the U.S. Bank. So today, Carrie and I are here to share our internal developer platform journey. Before we get into this, let me introduce myself. My name is Poonam Gurg, and currently working in the U.S. Bank since 2019, and I have total 15 years of uh, technology experience in various business domains that includes medical, retail, and tech. And on the side, I work for external community that empowers women in tech. Over to you, Carrie. Thank you, Poonam. My name is Carrie Pomier. I am currently a product group manager, vice president at US Bank with full accountability for the developer tools and experience portfolio. At the bank, Poonam and I work directly to enable our engineers, which is a group of 10,000 strong, and ensure that they have the tools that they need in order to succeed. I've been with the bank for three years, but prior to that, I spent 15 in transportation technology. During that time, I also spent 10 years coaching high school dance team, and what I have learned is that if any of you have teenagers, they can be controlled using them like a scrum team or a Kanban board. So use that tip as you move forward with the rest of your life and into your day. But some fun facts that you may or may not know about US Bank is that we are headquartered in beautiful, sunny, always temperate Minneapolis, Minnesota. <laughs> We have, uh, we have over 70,000 team members, and with that, that's employees in 13 countries with over 2,000 branches within 26 states. So with that, that makes us the fifth largest commercial bank, and we are currently number 103 on the Fortune 500. You did not come today to hear me talk all about US Bank. You came today to hear us talk about internal developer platforms. So when we decided to go on this journey approximately three years ago, we had to sit down and have some very hard conversations. These conversations included, do we build or buy? And what truly are we looking to enable? And what capabilities are we looking to make sure that we're building so that we have a measurable outcome so that we can say that this was successful here at the bank itself? So as we went through this, we created five main tenets that we really used as our reference guide and our North Star to help design and build this platform itself. So as we went through the process, if anything that we were building, requirements that we were gathering did not come together and build or enable any one of the five tenants, we had to start over on that particular piece because we wanted to make sure that we were staying true to what we were trying to build. So the first tenant that we were looking for was to provide developer, uh, provide developer productivity. So with this, we needed to ensure that we had an integrated tool set. We wanted to ensure that there was also streamlined components with a reduced barrier to entry and also having standardization by design. So by being able to prioritize this productivity and prioritize those individual pieces within it, we really wanted our developers and our engineers to come to work, sit down, and be able to start working and not have to deal with all of the different pieces that they have to go through administratively uh, that usually trips them up and take away some of those frictions. The next piece that we wanted, we spoke with our customers. Now keep in mind, when you're building anything, and you're gonna hear me say this, because as a product person representing at a very heavy tech conference, your engineers are customers. They are the customers you're building for. So we went ahead and we crossed our um, business lines, and we made sure that as we were shaking hands and understanding what those different use cases were, that we really heard them say, we need to enable business agility. We need to be able to build fast, fail fast, and we need to have increased resiliency. We need to have that confidence that everything that we push is gonna make it to where it needs to be, so that way we can go ahead and enable all of our internal engineering teams to get their product to all of our end users, so all of our, um, all of our folks that have US bank applications on their phones. Um, whether you are wealth management, consumer, banking, it doesn't matter. All of those teams are enabled by this platform and this technology that we're helping build. So we needed to make sure that that reliability was there. Within that, we also partnered with a lot of folks at the bank, including risk, compliance, audit, 
ISS, security, et cetera. And to do this, we really wanted to ensure that we had a compliant SDLC built in. We needed to make it an easier experience for them to find all of the different pieces that they needed when it came to audit, to finding evidence, to looking at controls, our, if things inherited or not. We really needed to make sure that we were keeping that um, front, front and center so that we had that in one place. We also chose to make sure that we were building an opinionated pipeline. We wanted to make sure that as our engineers were pushing the code, that they had the confidence to understand that if they had the declarative config set incorrectly, that it wouldn't accept the code and we wouldn't allow that to get pushed out into production if it was something that might flag us later. Additionally, we needed to ensure that we had proactive monitoring and self-healing as standard. We needed to stay on board. For those of you who aren't aware, we also own Elevon, which as you go and pay for items at the stores with your credit card, a lot of times those are powered by Elevon. And as we move into the holiday shopping season, it would be catastrophic <laughs> if we were not able to process those due to a software um, glitch or be able to push any sort of a, um, a break fix that we would need to in that case. So really we needed to ensure that those pieces were there, including by building in product metrics, love our product managers, by building in those product metrics to make sure that we understood not only how it was being used, but then what was being built, right? So then that way we understood where we needed to put our money, what wasn't being used properly, and what needed some, um, needed some tweaking to it. The next one is very near and dear to my heart, is a developer first experience. I'll talk more in depth about persona research towards the end here, but really we also learned that we needed to reduce that cognitive load, we needed to ensure that we automated tasks, and we also needed to eliminate dependencies on other teams that frequently create mini blockers. For anyone that's worked with a team that is not full stack, you know that the danger of sequencing items and sequencing work and someone not delivering on time is something that can derail your uh, releases and it can derail being able to get that out the door in time. Poonam? Thank you, Kerry. So building our own internal developer platform proved out to be a transformative, and that's what our fifth point talks about, which is scaling for the future, and it also enables to grow our business. So as, as you all know, when companies scale, the complexity of building the application, managing their environments also, also increases. And that is where what IDB proved out for us as like a foundational as asset, how? Because it allows us a scaling by standardizing the deployment practices, integrated with cloud, and managing those resources efficiently. And now our IDP really turned out to be a core asset that evolves alongside uh, with our organization. So the, from the tech viewpoint, since I know this is a tech conference, everyone is pretty much interested, okay, what is the tech things, and where did you start? Like, okay, what is the few tech things that you have considered when you are building this IDP? So, uh, today morning, I happened to uh, attend the session of two P's in part, and where Abby really called it out. First thing is modular and flexible ar architecture. And she, is, uh, she was majorly focusing on like, I really don't have to call out, but still I would like to call out, that is API design driven. So when we are building our own, AP, our own IDP, we have literally leverages to both, uh, to both prominent design patterns, that is microservice and API. Another one is the plugin and extensibility options in order to meet our business needs without disrupting our core platform. Now, second is second thing is we have ha we have automated our self-service workflows, which is standardize our governance and policies that is defined since we live into the regulated industry. Third is we are utilizing this platform uh, for defining our data. So we are trying to make a data-driven decision making. So we capture the since Kerry called it out, we are we are building this platform not as like a platform we are trying to build as like a product, and that is where we are trying to capture the product metrics which ties back to our users. And what are my user behaviors are, what are their actions, and that's where we say like, okay, what is the usage analytics looks like when, we, when different kind of persona are using this tool. And the second thing is, another users we have, like we keep on constantly taking our customers' feedback. Customers are none, but in, when we are building the internal developer portal, we are saying 70,000 employees within the US bank, they all are my customer, let's take the feedback from them, how this tool provides them our value to the business. Third, uh, fourth is like we have 
um, and when, while building this internal developer platform, we are focusing on like, you might have also experienced the same. When if you are working in regulated industry, we have these loggings and monitorings, and these are all scattered in multiple places. So in our case, in, in when we are building this IDP, we said like we should have a centralized place of logging and monitoring, and that is where we are. We are still building and we are still enhancing our observability and matrix tool. And lastly, I would say like we have improved our developer experience. So how we have improved the developer experience because developer, I think the, in the today's talk, it's like Atul Priya Sharma has really called it out. Like it, it is not about uh, the building the platform for one particular customer. Sometimes the people who are building this platform, they also are the consumers. And that is where we, when we are building this IDP, we are taking not only the feedback from our end customer, but from our developers too, in order to improve developer experience on that. And lastly, definitely business, uh, bank survives with business. I mean, banks survive with having their business to uh, being in the business market. So that is, uh, that is where that's a big, that's where our stakeholders, and that's where we kind of like building the matrix for our stakeholders, which aligns with business matrix and KPIs. For example, uh, we have recently enabled the tags for uh, the cloud asset resources that in, the, uh, in our infrastructure in order to provide the transparency to the business lines, stating that like, you know, you, have, you are consuming this much resources, and this is what it looks like, and this is how platform is. Uh, and that is how we are enabling a business for you and you have to pay for it. <clears throat> now, next is, oh, come on, go over it. Okay, before I jump into the slide, like why developers care about the modern platform at US Bank. So we branded uh, in our internal developer platform as Shield platform as a unified application developer portal. So our, our definition within US Bank is, it is a defined method that app teams will use to get their respective applications into the cloud as well as on-prem. Since we are regulated industry, so we have witnessed that like over a period of time, we have on-prem pipelines also. We also have cloud pipelines and that does not fit into the meets of into the meets of leveraging all the cloud features, which involves like your scalability, which include uh, which includes your security, which includes your compliance, etc. And that is where the Shield platform that we call this at internal developer portal try to solve the problem and provide a team a solution to easy, fast way, an extensible model to leverage all the benefits that comes with the cloud. And that is where our developers do care about this platform at US Bank, because it is provide, it's a self-service. And, and, and how it is self-service, we have designed our easy to use comprehensive documentation, which reduces the cognitive load of our customer, make them happier, make the, and reduce the complexity. We also have like extensible and inner source option. And this extensible inner source option, I think this is the, uh, in our talk in the morning, Abby also called it out in two P's in part. It has an important aspect because when it comes down to, you know, when you are when you are building the internal developer folder, don't uh, don't think for like a current solution. Look for the longer term of vision. Like where do you want to take this platform? And and when when it comes down to the platform needs, you need to think about the business also. So it's you are building not for current. You are building for the future. So you should have in your platform that extensibility and inner sourcing model in a such a way that it is able to extend the capability of the platform to meet the needs of the business without modifying to the core. So third, this is very close to me because I've been in the bank almost like five years and in the first year, my journey as a developer in US Bank to deploy my application to the cloud was, is, is reduced to almost like 150% in the steps. Honestly, and that yes. does not include our like automated governance processes altogether. So I can easily say that it reduces the cognitive load of developers. Again, making them happier, more efficient. We have eliminated most of the manual tasks, which uh, and also and when it comes down to manual tasks, it's not only about the change management process. Since we had like just right before our session, we had like policy as a code. We also automated that in our process. So that's the thing. <clears throat> and for this, uh, 
uh, port, which is again very close to me because I am I have been experiencing since lot and I've been calling out uh, when I was building this platform. It is like we have enabled our engineers to have a release of constant flow of their products within their uh, within their respective environment, making sure that security, compliance, risk already built in. So you yes. are PCI or SOX compliant, so you are not missing, you are not missing the risk, you are not putting your apps or business apps into the risk exposure, it's being into uh, <coughs> being into the business of your regulated industry. Honestly, I worked before bank into the retail. There was, and I never heard about these risk pieces. Once I get into the bank and then I was like, oh, amazing. I never knew it, it is so big. It's so hard to build those out. So I would say like working together, so in our, if I say that, working together in a shale platform is not only solving all the time risk and compliance process or security challenges, but honestly it uh, turns out to be, you know, for us like risk and security is like, it's become a part of our engineering process in, improve, to, in order to improve the timeliness, effectiveness of our compliance solutions and improves the current culture of our organization. I think this is the first thing being focused by Atul Priya Sharma talks today in the morning, like, you know, organization focus is first more important. So we, we have really bring that culture of like, you know, uh, having of like us versus them, which is like win-win for engineers and, com and compliance partners. Over to you, Kerry. Thank you, Poonam. So as we went ahead and continue to go down the road <laughs> of understanding why developers care about the modern platform at US Bank, I really wanted to come at it from that experience perspective. And as we sit here, we really needed to understand and be able to build something that had um, the developer console or shield console that was an integrated tool with single sign-on access to what I use in my day. So what that means is as we went through and built this console out, we also created and brought together, as many legacy companies have, very disparate systems where different pieces of information are stored. So we had to piece together four disparate systems in order to create one single home for documentation that was not only searchable, but also was able to stay up to date even with multiple systems of record. We also were able to build in inner sourcing and being able to create additional plugins so that way folks and our engineers could also contribute to and make the system better as they were using it. All, all behind that single pane of glass UI. And really in order to get that single pane of glass UI to something that has intrinsic value and not something that just looks, eh, looks fine, I'll just go over here and keep doing what I'm doing, we actually partnered internally with um, an employee engagement team that we had so that way we had additional resources and extra boots on the ground. And by doing that, we went through and interviewed engineers, stakeholders, different users from all across our org in order to get behaviors patterns, what's important, what, um, what do they feel would be the, of most use. And really what that came up with was being able to get us a configurable dashboard where they can log into as they start their day, they'll pull up their Microsoft Teams, unfortunately not Slack, pull up their Teams, pull up their email if that's something that an engineer checks, which we all know you guys probably don't, and then they're able to pull up their console, go into it and say, okay, do I have any deployments? Do I have any deployments I'm tracking? Is there anything scheduled? I'm looking for that one that Poonam's team is doing because once they get that to prod, then I know I can push mine to prod. Um, ensuring that they're able to see if there's any incidents that are happening that they need to jump in on. Or they can just say, I'm gonna pretend none of that exists and I'm just gonna go right to my repository and just go heads down and do what I need for the day. So really being able to do that, understand their behaviors, get the metrics in there, we were able to go from zero users, brand new Greenfield, um, up to over 5,000, up to over 5,000 a month as we continue to roll out new functionality using Adobe ClickPath for our, um, our product metrics as well. Um, by doing that, we also were able to partner with our other team members at US Bank to go through those different pieces, making sure that we had pipeline patterns and templates, ensuring that we had good evidence collection, whether they could manually upload it or, or um, pull it in from their deployments, ensuring that we had blueprints or golden paths for them to follow, ensuring that those pieces were there, also controls and inherited, uh, whether they were inherited or net new for compliance. So by doing all of this together, we've really created one giant database where we are able to build our own AI chatbot, build machine learning, be able to have our engineers go in and 
type, you know, build me some app context for this, and then letting it do some of the work for them. So being able to get all of that in one place has been extremely valuable for our engineers to get time back in their day, reduce friction, reduce noise, and just let them do their jobs, which is solving problems instead of doing paperwork. And as we go to close out um, our talk here, we have about five, six minutes left. We've definitely come across some opportunities and learnings that we would like to share with you today. And one that I, again, would love to drive home is persona-driven research. If you are not treating your engineers as customers and as a product, then you're not gonna build something that has intrinsic value or you're not gonna solve the right problem. You're just gonna build something that sits unused. Um, and by doing that, you're understanding who your users are, why they care, are there specific features that those personas need, are there any overlaps. Understanding all of these different things, including what problems you're trying to solve, is gonna get you your minimum viable solution that still solves the problem. A lot of folks try to push a minimum viable that only partially solves a problem just to get it out the door faster, but if it doesn't solve the problem, it's not gonna be used and your adoption is gonna fall before you even start. So don't hamstring yourself before you get out the door. And then one of the last pieces that I love in this that I've used my whole career is you are not the user. Your team may be building it, and they may be a user, but they're not the user. So that's why it's so important to get outside of your comfort bubble and make sure you're building something, even if it's an internal tool, that you're building something that has value. Because if your company is putting money into it, we owe it to bring that value back and ensure we're building something res uh, responsibly with it, so that way we are increasing, um, increasing their productivity. I also want to talk about pushing the pace iteratively. I purposely chose not to say fail fast because I feel like fail fast is something that we definitely want to do when we push our digital products out the door, right? But as we're looking at building our platform, we want to be able to push the pace uh, responsibly and respectfully by having early design feedback. That's going to be key because once you start rolling down that road with your design, you all know it's a lot harder to roll it back than to change it at the beginning. So make sure those prototypes are there, they're your best friend, you're gonna love them, and you're gonna make sure that you have the right folks in the right room. And speaking of having the right folks in the right room, you need to be honest about your feedback loop. You need to be honest about your OODA loop, observe, orient, decide, act, and you need to critically optimize that. Do you have the right people in the room? Are you having really expensive meetings just to have really expensive meetings because everybody thinks that their opinion is the one that's gonna make the difference? Right? And unfortunately, I'm calling that out because as legacy institutions go, I think we've all worked with folks that you know, have a, a major fear of missing out, have major FOMO, and we want to make sure that we understand when we need to escalate, who do we escalate to, and how can we keep moving forward and push past, push past some of these to get our decision loop faster for our engineers and for everyone else. And the last point that I have in Push the Pace Iteratively is clarity is kindness. What do I mean by that? I mean that there's a lot of terms out there that are interchangeable for the same thing. So as you're crossing the aisle and you're, and you're shaking hands with all your business partners, they may, be calling this, they may be calling an apple an apple, but really, do, are they talking about a yellow apple or a red apple? Are they talking about a Honeycrisp? Are they talking about a Granny Smith, right? And by being able to get, the, get it level set and get all your terms out there right away, you are reducing churn for your engineers, you're reducing churn for all of your folks that are in the building process, and you're making your requirements even more clear, so that way everybody knows exactly what they're building and what problem we're trying to solve. So asking questions for clarification, it, you're not doing it to be a pill, you're doing it to be kind to your future self and to your engineers. Poonam? Okay, now transparency. Again, this transparency falls in our cost opportunity landscape because it is never done. Today, things may be what our customer sees from our platform may be transparent, but later on changes because the requirement changes. And that's where we say, like we all know, changes should not occur as, a, uh, as abrupt. It should, it should be consistent and happen to be as a team. And when I say team, 
That's again, I will go with the talk and I want to relate with Atul Priya's first prime, are you ready for your platform? And the first is organization focus. So you are not working as a team, but you should work as an organization, get your buy-in from all the business line like you are building this platform. And when you are providing the uh, matrix also, then that should be also transparent to them. For this earlier, if you, if you, I would like to highlight one example where I have mentioned like in IR IDP, we have observability and monitoring. And this is where we keep on enhancing our real-time monitorings and analytics in alliance with proactive incident alert management. And honestly, every quarter basis, we really do take a feedback or maybe we also provide our including to our business partners, showing the matrix. And we are saying like, are the, and we are asking these questions, are these metrics provide you a meaningful progress to your business? Does it aligns to your business KPIs? And, or then it, 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 then it translates to it, are you sharing this matrix with the right people even when they are not flattering? At some point of time, they may say like it does work, but it doesn't work. And that's how it comes down to a question like what, trade-off do you have with your customer? And then the trade-off comes down to it, like again, that we have, uh, that we, uh, I, Abby has stressed out, Atul Priya has also stressed out, like you should have in your platform, like extensibility option, or maybe given an op give an option and pro or use an architecture like a plugin based, where they can build a matrix on the top of it. And that's where we usually have those conversation turn out to be providing a, ensuring having a customer successful journey. That is customer first mindset. And in a nutshell, we would like to end our uh, session with a great saying from our CTO, and which, which is very dear to everyone within our organization, is good architectural design enables you to free developers with, while improving the way that we meet our regulatory obligation. It is easy to prioritize one over the other. A good developer platform, and particularly for US Bank, it does both. Thank you. Thank you.